إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تخرجوا شيئا إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منكما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور مختفاتها وكل مختفة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النعم. All praise belongs to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We praise Him, we worship Him, and we seek His help. And we seek his help and refuge from the things, the evil things that we have within ourselves and from the evil actions that we commit. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, nobody can misguide after this. And whoever chooses to be misguided, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never guide. Him. I bear witness that nobody is worthy of worship except Allah, alone with no partners. And that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you believe, be conscious of your Lord and do not die except in a state of Islam. Be conscious of your Lord in a way that He deserves and do not die except in a state of submission. He also says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for you, mankind, be conscious of your Lord, the one who created you from a single soul, and from that soul He created His mate, and from them He created many men and women. And fear Allah, the one to whom you demand your rights, do not cut the relationships of blood. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching over you. He also says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, O you who believe, fear Allah and speak only the truth. He will guide you towards goodness and He will forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, then they have achieved a very mighty achievement indeed. So if we say, Hamma because the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He deserves it is endless. But we have only praised Him a little bit. So we take it to its completion with Amma Ba'd in the book of Hadith Kitab Allah. Now that the best speech is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance, the guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And no doubt the worst matters are the innovative matters. And innovation leads to misguidance. And misguidance leads to the fire. And Allah is all on the fire. Say Amin. Amin. Before I begin the khutbah, a quick reminder to myself and to everyone. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen special people to be here right now. That this is, in essence, the house of Allah, because we do the jama'ah here. And in essence, we have been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to witness this special occasion, to be in this special gathering, in this special time of Ramadan. So, do not leave off your good deeds willingly. That Allah has written for you maybe millions of good deeds today, in this gathering. But you choose to take less. Why would you choose to take less? How would you choose to take less? By being distracted during the khutbah, or by using your phones, or by whispering to the people next to you, or playing with the cards. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi advised us to be attentive during the khutbah. So to begin, I want to point out the reality that every single part of Islam, every single element of Islam, has two components. One of them is the outward component, and one of them is the inward component. So for example, we have salah, we have prayer. Many people pray. Many people pray five times a day, but some of them will be on the day of judgment, they won't get anything. The Prophet wasallam said, some people pray and they only get half of their salah. Some people get a third, some people get a tenth. Why? Because their mind wasn't in it. They were not being conscious of it. They were not aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during that prayer. And so there's a meaning behind it. 
It's not just for doing some yoga in, the, in these different positions and getting a hamstring stretch. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put meaning behind it. So there's the outward dimension of salah, and then there's the inward dimension of sunnah. But the ulama say that the purpose of salah is to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And like this, everything has an inward dimension. The Prophet sallallahu said, pertaining to the inward dimension of the human being, that we have the upward body, and we have the inward heart. He said there is a piece of the body, there is a piece of flesh. If it is good, everything is good. And if it is bad, everything is bad. It is the heart. Why? Because the iman, the amal al-salihah, where do they come from? Where does the iman reside within the human being? Other than the heart. And the good deeds and the good actions of the body, where do they get their value? In the manamal bin niyan. Actions get their value from intention. And where is intention? It's in the heart. And where are all the praiseworthy attributes of a human being that the Prophet embodied and taught us in the Sunnah? Where is the attribute of loving Allah and His Messenger? Where is that reside? Love is from the heart. And where is the attribute of bravery? Where is the attribute of generosity? Where is the attribute of being magnanimous and being forgiving? Also in the heart. So if the heart is good, everything is good. So what is the heart of Allah? What is the heart of Ramadan? But subhanAllah, in Wala Nadi, he said, Ramadan is an honor to us. It came to us, it knocked on our doors. And we all did our best. Whatever capacity we have, we all did our best to be hospitable. This is the nature of the believers to be hospitable. And so some of us, we had occupations, we had school, some of us had exams, some of us had work, some of us had obligations at home, maybe we had to take care of our parents, maybe we had to take care of our siblings, maybe we have children, maybe we have to take care of them. Everyone has occupations and different things that they're uh, accommodating. But they're trying their best to be hospitable. We're all trying to make our best to be good hosts to Ramadan. So what happened? Ramadan knocked on the door. And we started tidying up. Okay, let's go clean the house. Okay. No, these sins hide them. These, these, these bad things put them away. The phone algorithm, we gotta change the algorithm on our phone. We gotta start loving Islamic content now. We started cleaning up. Clean up house. Why? Oh, the guest is coming. Then the guest was here and we tried to honor it by doing things that pleased it. We stood in Salah and we read Quran and we made dinner. And now the guest is leaving. Today is Jumatul Wada. The guest is leaving. So, how do we honor our guest as it is leaving? How do we honor our guest? One way that we dishonor our guest is that we take every remnant that they have left in our home and left in our life and we throw it out the window. That we say, the sense of Ramadan is here, let's go, let's scrub it clean. You know, the, the, the Ramadan came with these barakat, these gifts, let's take them out and throw them out the trash. This is a way to dishonor our guests. How would you feel if you went to someone's house and you, you spent a good time with them, you brought them some gifts, you brought them some, some goodness, and then you leave and you see them throwing it all out the back. Because Ramadan 
brings us more fulfillment. What makes us full? One of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as samad as samad most of you know, Allah is Allah is the absolute. But some of the meanings of as samad is the one who is full, without gaps, without emptiness. But when we look in ourselves, when I look in myself, then Allah has made me a pattern. And what is the pattern? 99.9999% emptiness. Empty. When I look at my creation, I'm empty. And when I look at the dunya and everything, it's all made of atoms. All of it is empty. So how can there be fulfillment in that which is empty? When we have left the one who is full. So the fulfillment that we found in Ramadan, the gift that it came with as it knocked on our door, the happiness and the contentment and the fulfillment, it's because in the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find contentment. They're fulfilled. Because you're connected to the one who's full. But when you leave it, you become empty. Masalan, you know, an example. Maybe there's a young man somewhere. None of us are shallow, but maybe there's a young man. And he sees some, some woman, some girl. And she's very beautiful. Now what does he want to do? To look at her. He wants to take in her beauty. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Tell us to do. Lower our gaze. So he has to choose. You can't do both. I knew I saw a young brother in high school. He went to a wedding. SubhanAllah, I mean this is not a halal wedding by any metric. There were some women doing the dancing and stuff and stuck. I just like, one look is okay, right? <laughs> I said, what are you doing? And then he sees the disappointment because I broke his, uh, his, his gaze. <laughs> so I don't know why. You have to choose. You lower your gaze or you don't. Now what happens? He has a desire, he wants to see, he wants to prolong his look. Okay, what if he does? Will his soul be satisfied? No. And that means only in the remembrance of Allah does the heart find contentment. So his soul is not satisfied. But what about his desires? What about his, his body, his, you know, his nafs? Is, will that be fulfilled? Well, is, is he going to look and then be like, okay, I'm happy now? No. Because he looks, now he has something else he wants. I want to go talk to her. Okay. So he goes talk to her. Is he satisfied now? Is his soul satisfied? Is his desire satisfied? Neither are satisfied. So what does he do? He gets her number. Starts talking to her. Two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, doesn't matter. He has an exam the next day, he has a study, okay, whatever he's talking. Is he satisfied now? No. Now he wants to hold her hand. Take her out on dates. Maybe hug her sometimes. Maybe kiss her sometimes. Where does it lead? Goes to dinner. How can he does dinner? Is he satisfied? Not satisfied. So he does it again. And he does it again. And he does it again. Now is he satisfied? No. Now he wants more women. He wants other people. He wants to try new things. So what will satisfy him? What will satisfy him? Your one for four destroy you until you visit the grave. The dust of the grave fills his stomach. That's what fills his stomach. So he pursued his desire. He looked and looked and looked and searched and searched and searched. He left his soul empty. He left his soul hungry and starving. And his desires were also starving. But then his, his mouth was filled with dirt. And his appetite was secure with dirt. What type of dirt is this? What flavor will it have when all that he has put into his life is desire and shahwa and disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Give me a little bit spicy. Give me a little bit spicy that dirt. So the, the price that he had to pay to extend his gaze was jahat. That was the price. That was the 
the return. So then you say, okay, did he benefit from it? Was there a benefit in it for him? No. He didn't even fulfill his basic desire. He didn't even fulfill that. So there was no benefit for him. And the cost? It's too expensive. Versus, he just slowly the pain the first time. He has a little bit of pains, a little bit of forbearance, and Allah gives him a pious spouse. A few years on down the road. He waits, he's patient. Doesn't approach people on a lot of And he gets the Khadija to his Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa She fulfills his desires, she fulfills his heart, she fulfills his ruh, she fulfills everything. Of course, the example goes both ways, for men and for women. And so, the way to honor our guest is to treasure what the treasure that is brought for us. The fulfillment that Ramadan gave us, it didn't give it to us because it's Ramadan and it gave us fulfillment. It's because we connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this month. It's because we remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this month. It's because we were with the one who's the fulfiller. So he fulfilled us. Okay. What happens then when I'm 80? We go and we take all the junk from the backyard and put it back in the house. The fulfillment going to be there or not? It's gone. So, we have a few days left. Today's the 26th day, I believe, 27th night. Could be the little Qadr tonight. The little Qadr put in the Qadr for more than 1,000 months, maybe 100 years of of Ajah in one night. Maybe we didn't have the Ramadan we wanted. Maybe we fell short in certain ways. Maybe we, we couldn't clean the house fully. Some sins maybe crept through. But actually they're known by their enemies. And so let us honor our guests in these last days when we know it's going to depart from us. And let us preserve its meaning. Let us pre preserve its inner dimension that has been instilled within us by continuing the narrative on the day of Eid. So when Eid comes and they call you to the music festival, don't expose your dog. Don't bring the headphones back and the, you know, Drake or whoever you want to listen to the dog. SubhanAllah. These aren't going to really fulfill it. The benefits, the price is too high. The benefit is too low. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us amongst the people who gain the inner meaning of Ramadan. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us amongst those who internalize this sakina, this fulfillment, and who have it forever. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to be victorious over our desires that, sh that are taking us towards the path of destruction. So my brothers and sisters, my quick reminder to myself and to everyone is that there are only two phases in life, only two places you can be. The one is in Ramadan, and one is waiting for Ramadan. That's it. And so if Ramadan is your favorite time of the year, if the feelings of Ramadan, the community aspect of Ramadan, and seeing thousands of people in the masjid, and experiencing the barakah of Ramadan is something that we enjoy, then I testify that if you continue the spirit of Ramadan, you will feel this in all your years. The ulama have said, Laylatul Qadr is the night of forgiveness. In the same way the Prophet was asked, when is the day of judgment? He said, when you die, it's going to start. Practically speaking, when you die, that's the day of judgment. So practically speaking for us, Laylatul Qadr, if you want it, it's the night of forgiveness. Maybe someone stays up to the 27th night and doesn't give anything. Is that Laylatul Qadr for him? But he stays up one night in Dhul Qa'da or Rabbi Allah forgives him all of his 
sinful sins. And elevate his rank. It's all about what's in the heart, brothers and sisters. That once we grab the meaning behind this, maybe one such that is worth 1,000 salah. Maybe one such that. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fills within us the meaning of Ramadan. The taqwa that comes with Ramadan. And the closeness to him that we feel. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us all amongst those who are guided to the straight path. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us amongst the people whom He loves and the people who love Him. The people who love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than their own selves, their parents, their wealth, and everything that they own. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us amongst the people who live beautiful lives and have beautiful hands and end up in a beautiful place with beautiful people. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us righteous children for our parents whether they are alive or deceased. If they are alive, oh Allah, make us obedient to them, make us kind towards them, make us patient with them. And oh Allah, if they are deceased, make us good salah for them. Oh Allah, make us amongst the people of Quran and the people you accept the good deeds from. Accept our good deeds, oh Allah. Accept our qiyam, accept our siyam, accept our jazawa, accept our, our acts of service towards others. Oh Allah, accept our good deeds in terms of spreading the knowledge and dawah. Oh Allah, accept all of our good deeds Forgive us for all of our shortcomings and oh Allah, do not allow us to leave this gathering without getting the the, the mafkar and the rahmah which you have guaranteed for us in the month of Ramadan.